everybody, Kendra the Vet Tech here, and today I'm gonna go over my wardrobe and what I wear on the daily. I see lots of questions on social media very frequently about what do you guys wear every day, you know, from people who are either already working in large animal and equine medicine or people who are looking to go to their first working interview in a large animal or equine medicine hospital. So even if you don't have a job, stick around. This one's still for you. You can get some tips from this one on what to wear for your working interview. Okay. So I'll just start at the top and work my way down to the bottom. First, we'll talk about scrub tops. I love, this is my new favorite, the scrub top that I'm wearing right now, which is the Carhartt Crossflex. The things that I really like about this one is it's made of the sweat wicking or the stay dry fabric, whatever you wanna call it. And the name says it, it's super flexible. So really nice, stretchy, flexible material that moves with you really well. And it's great over the summer. It's really breathable over the summer. It keeps you nice and cool during the summer months when you're working out in the heat. My other really favorite scrub top is the Grey's Anatomy and specifically the one that has the buttons on the back. So it can be sort of tailored into your size and give you a really sharp, crisp, professional look. The colors that I go to for these two, I love purple if you guys didn't know, but I also have the Grey's Anatomy in navy. It looks really sharp. And in this Carhartt, I was in a situation where I could only wear royal blue or navy. And the navy in this Carhartt, that also looks really sharp, really crisp, and really professional. So that's another color option for you guys that I think is a really great option that makes you look really professional. Next are bottoms. The favorite jeans that I have right now is the new line from Ariat, the Ariat Rebar jeans. The reason why I love these is not just the fit, they also have a cargo pocket on the side. I use my Sharpie marker a lot on any given day, so I really love that it has the pin specific slot in the cargo pocket. So I always have that handy and readily available since it is a cargo pocket, you can put other things in there too, like your bandage scissors or other things that you like to keep in your cargo pocket. So that's one reason why I really love these Ariat jeans aside from the fit. Other jeans that I've had great experience with are the Car Carhartt jeans. I had several pairs of those when I was working full time too, and I rotated through just two or three pair over the course of a few years, and they were still holding up really well, being washed daily after work. So Carhartt jeans, you can't really go wrong with those either. They hold up really well for what it is we do. Another pair of pants that I really like a lot are the Duluth pants. So earlier this year when I found out I was pregnant, my lovely Ariat jeans and my belts were becoming more uncomfortable. So I was trying to find some pants that would kind of stretch with me until I was big enough to go into maternity jeans. And I found these great Duluth pants. They don't have a button, they just have elastic panels on the side. So they were stretching with me. And you know, even if you're not pregnant, I've still been wearing them postpartum. They're super comfortable in the field because they do just kind of stretch and give with you. They are a water resistant material as well. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we're wet pretty much all winter, so they're really great for me in that respect, but I think they would be great for anybody in this job with the water resistant factored in. Other bottoms in mobile practice out in the field, I'm a jeans girl, I really like to wear jeans, but if you wanted to try some scrub bottoms, the bottoms that go with this top, the Carhartt Cross Flex bottoms, they are just like the top. They're stretchy, they're flexible, they breathe really well in the summertime, and they do have a cargo pocket on the side as well. So if you're digging the cargo pocket look, they also have that and it works really nice. I have had days where I've done general anesthesia, a couple procedures in the morning, and then end up in the field in the afternoon. And I like to wear scrub bottoms when I'm doing general anesthesia, cause why not take advantage of sort of being able to wear pajamas to work, right? So I've had days where I've done both and I think these scrub bottoms would hold up really well doing field work as well. All the way to the bottom now, let's talk about shoes. I do like to run in my free time, that's one of my hobbies. So what I have found in the course of running, educating myself on the right shoes for running is that certain brands of shoes and certain fits work better depending on 
how you walk, how your feet actually move when you're walking. So for me, the Ariat brand shoes work really nicely. I have had the Ariat Terrain pull-ons that are waterproof. I worked through two winters in those and the waterproofing held up, kept my feet dry through two winters. They were nice and comfortable. When I had to purchase new boots, Honestly, I was just looking for a little cheaper alternative. The the area, the area terrain pull-ons are a little bit more expensive. So I was looking for something a little cheaper. So I just went with the terrain lace-ups. Those are my dailies now during the spring, summer months when it's drier. What I've started doing for dailies over the winter where it's really wet here is last winter, I actually switched over to the short muck boots. Some people have had bad experiences with muck boots, but they held up really well for me over the winter last year. And I plan on continuing with that plan, just wearing the short muck boots as my daily over the winter. All right, so let's talk about jackets, outerwear, and layers. And again, for you people that have stuck around to find out some information about what to wear to working interviews, this part is important for you as well. You need to see what the weather is gonna be like on the day that you're gonna be there working and make sure that you take appropriate outerwear. Usually how I like to do outerwear is in layers. The first year, the first winter, I was in vet med working outside. I bought a heavy Carhartt and I realized that wasn't the best idea because we can go from being really cold to really hot quickly and you need to be able to shed those layers and still stay warm. So I would highly recommend just layering up rather than having one big heavy layer. Typically in the winter, what I do is I start my base layer with a long underwear shirt under my scrub top. Then for my next layer, if it is one of the more, if it is a really rather cold day, I will opt for a sweater. I have this nice quarter zip sweater that looks nice and professional that I will wear over my scrub top and my long john top for my next layer. So plus or minus that one for you guys. Next, what I'll do is I have three different weighted vests for the different times of year. So I have my nice fleece vest for when it's cooler. Then I have this nice mid-weight vest. This is a Dickies one that I got this past year and I actually really like this one as well. Just a mid-weight quilted inside, really nice. And then I have just a regular run-of-the-mill large puffy vest for when it's really cold outside. So typically I'll do my vest layer. And then my next layer again, I have a couple of different weight options for that one as well. It's usually wet here in the Pacific Northwest, so all of my outer layers are at minimum water resistant. So my next layers, for my next layers, I have just a regular actual unlined rain jacket. This one does really well in the wind and the rain, and sometimes I even get a little hot in it because it doesn't, it's not breathe, it doesn't breathe very well. The next one I have is my mid-weight Carhartt. So if it's a little cooler, I will opt for this over the green one. And I do have my quilted Carhartt jacket that's a little heavier for a little cold, even colder yet weather. I'll pull this bad boy out for if it's the coldest days that we have around here, which are nothing compared to the Midwest and the Northern areas, but uh, sometimes I do need that one, so I'll keep him around if I need it. Other things that I've discovered that really help a lot with keeping you warm are something to keep your neck warm. So the first thing that I have here is actually something my mom got me for Christmas several years ago and I hadn't worn it for the longest time and then I discovered how genius and amazing it is at keeping you warm. It's fleece and it's a hood that just has a long neck piece on it. So this thing is really snug and warm. Actually, I had a doctor that thought I was wearing the same hoodie base layer every single day of the year and then I showed her the wonder that is this hood with the neck cover on it. So this guy keeps me nice and warm. I love to wear ball caps to keep my hair out of my face when I'm working, and so this thing also works really well too. Fits snug and keeps my ears warm over my ball caps when I'm working. If I want something to keep me warm, but maybe dialed down just a little bit from my fleece here, I actually have a wild rag. This one I stole from my brother a couple years ago, so uh, Jace, if you're watching, sorry, finders keepers. But this wild rag works really nice, again, to just keep the wind and the cool off of your neck to keep you a little warmer. If you need something between just going bare neck and fleece, I recommend something like this wild rag. It works really nice for doing that. Moving on to some other things that you should always make sure that you wear, definitely for the love of all that is good and holy, wear a belt. 
Some of the pants options I gave you don't have belt loops, like the Duluth pants, they don't have belt loops on them. Scrub bottoms don't have belt loops. Usually they have some type of tie that you can at least tie them up to keep your pants more secure. But if you have belt loops, wear a belt. If you don't have belt loops, then definitely make sure that you tuck your undershirt into your pants. So again, when we're doing all of this bending and squatting, we're not showing off undergarments or lots of skin from our pants sagging down. So that brings us to the next thing. I always wear at least a cami under my scrub bottoms. And again, to have something to tuck in if I can't wear a belt with the bottoms I'm wearing. And to also make sure that if I'm lifting my arms above my head, if my scrub top comes up, drifts up, I won't have exposed midriff. We are professionals, guys, so we really need to dress as such, and having an undershirt really helps out in that image. You can buy them for a couple bucks at Walmart if you don't wanna sink a lot of money into them. That's usually what I do every year. I just go to Walmart and buy three or four new camis that are a couple dollars each. Sometimes they'll even last me a couple of years, just depends on how frequently I wash and wear them. So do make sure you're wearing an undershirt as well. The final thing to talk about are coveralls. Sometimes, the most of the time actually, the clinic that you'll work for will provide you with coveralls to wear. We usually wear them over our clothes when we're dealing with farm animals so that we practice good biosecurity. I, again, am in a position as a relief technician that I'm kind of providing my own things. So I bought my own coveralls this past year and all I did was buy the Amazon Essential brand coveralls. They were super cheap. I think they were less than 20 bucks a pair. And I bought two pairs, working three days a week, sometimes both pairs needing to be washed every single day. They've held up really well over the last year. They still look pretty new, no holes, tears. So they've done really well for me over the last year for something cheap, a pretty low investment. If you do need to buy some coveralls, those work well. And again, those are just speaking of ones that would cover your clothes, not keep you warm per se. If you are in a place where you need some coveralls to keep you warm, Carhartts are always a great way to go. If you are getting the quilt, quilted line coveralls to keep you warmer, I would definitely recommend that you get the bib ones, not the ones that have the long arms. Just because again, speaking to layers, then you can layer your top with your coats and things and take those off as needed. Whereas if you have the long sleeves on the coveralls, those are just gonna keep you really warm and you have no way around that. So I definitely get the bib ones if you have the option. And that wraps us up for today, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. You can either drop a comment below, get in touch with me on social media, or in my email, kendrathevettech at gmail.com. If you have things that you would like to learn about via these videos, you can also shoot me those ideas as well. I'm always open to go over things that you guys would like to learn. Do check out my website for other learning opportunities, such as my online courses, The Art of Veterinary Call Taking, and Swine General Anesthesia. You can also purchase my veterinary telephone triage flipbook through my website, kendrathevettech.com. There's also a link on my website for my podcast, or you can get it on your favorite podcast platform. It's Kendra the Vet Tech Podcast. We talk about career opportunities for credentialed veterinary technicians, or just some situations that have come up being a credentialed veterinary technician. So do be sure to check that out as well. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Be sure you hit the like and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new videos from Kendra the Vet Tech. Thanks, guys.